At one time, I was a member of the Texas Transportation <laughs> Museum also, but uh, we had uh, some differencing of opinions as to how things should be pursued, and uh, I decided that it wasn't in my best interest to just stay with them. Um, I have some photographs that uh, are, we have the museum, the San Antonio Railroad Heritage Museum, has acquired from the Texas, or the Institute of Texan Cultures, and uh, we have paid for those so that we can use them in, in uh, uh, events such as this. So anyway, th th these are some of the old depots that were in San Antonio during the time of the Hayes Street Bridge being built and uh, also the explosion uh, on March 18th in 2012, or not 2012, hey, <laughs> you are dead. Uh, 1912. Uh, this is Sunset Station with engine number 85 next to it. The uh, Getting to the uh, boiler explosion. Here's the Elmendorf Depot, which the city of Elmendorf sold to someone. They don't know who it was. They don't have the invoice. And so they have no record as to where it went. Um, here are some of the photographs. And I'm going to pass this around so that you can look at it. Um, of the boiler explosion itself. What I'm going to do, I've got three different accounts of that uh, explosion, one by F.A. Schmidt, which uh, Mr. John King and I were discussing earlier, or Kite, sorry, uh, were discussing earlier that his father may have been a contributor to Mr. Schmidt in writing this document. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting read, um, but I'm, I'm going to also take the time to read what the state, uh, the Texas Li State Library and Archives Commission has what, on their website. The Great Southwest Strike was not the last incident in Texas that showcased the dangerous working conditions and labor unrest in the railroad industry. The caption of this photo reads, view of the wreckage caused by what was supposed to have been the explosion of the boiler of a passenger locomotive in the terminal yards of the Southern Pacific Railroad in San Antonio, March 18th, which killed 26 men outright and seriously injured many others. Most of the men killed were strike breakers employed by the shops of the company situ situated closed to where the explosion took place. Railroad work was extremely dangerous. Nationally, between 1890 and 1917, a staggering 72,000 men or employees were killed, and over 2 million injuries were on the railroad tracks themselves. An additional 158,000 were killed in repair shops and roundhouses, just like the explosion in San Antonio. The, co the total casualties from this period are more than combined the casualties of every war fought by the United States. Steam boilers were a particular hazard. Since the beginning of the steam era, there have been literally thousands of explosions. It was an everyday occurrence then. Okay? Some of those horrific loss of life. Back in 1865, the steamship Sultrana exploded with a loss of 1,238 lives, most of them Union POWs just released from southern prisons. So dating back to the Civil War. In 1905, the naval gunship Bennington exploded, killing 62 sailors in an explosion at the Brockton Shoe Factory in Massachusetts killed 58 and leveled the, the factory. Explosions of railroad steam boilers took place on a regular basis. On the morning of March 18, 1912, dozens of men at the Southern Pacific Rail, or, uh, Yard in San Antonio 
were working around an engine of the Galveston, Harrisburg, and San Antonio Railroad. These men were firing up the engine to test it and ready for the train for service. One of the interesting things about this is that that engine had just been, where'd my piece of paper go that I had up here? Had just been wrecked in Seguin back in December of 1911. So they had taken the machine, the locomotive, brought it from Seguin to San Antonio to rebuild it. The railroad was very good at taking scrap materials or damaged locomotives or rail equipment and rebuilding it for future service. And the reason why is because the materials that they used were expensive, okay? You know, we think of a pound of steel not that expensive nowadays, but the thing is is that in order to process that steel from the ore, the entire process, that adds up in dollars. Uh, let's see here. At 8.55 a.m., the boiler exploded, sending the engine and many tons of railroad parts flying in every direction. The pressure wave and flying, flying debris leveled the nearby railroad shops and ripped out in, into the neighborhood, snapping trees and smashing into homes. As the explosion spent itself, scattered metal and human remains rained down for blocks in every direction. The front of the engine, almost intact, came to earth seven blocks away, flattening a house and killing a woman inside. The force of the explosion could be felt for miles. Just like what we had discussed earlier, 20 miles away, it could be heard. Well, in one of these accounts, they talk about someone on the west side of downtown being able to feel the percussion wave. It was the worst railroad boiler explosion in US history. Back at the train yard, survivors were trapped under fallen buildings and debris and in danger of being burned alive as fire spread through the wreckage. Remember, you've got a steam locomotive. It's got a fire in the firebox creating that steam from the water that's being you know, pressurized in the boiler. Um, San Antonio firefighters and police and military personnel and railroad workers frantically worked to free the survivors and fight the fire. Eerily, an engine damaged in the blast that was near 704 uh, had its whistle bent open and screamed for two hours as the boiler pressure subsided enough to shut down the noise. The final toll, according to this document, 26 killed and about 50 injured and about 10 men unaccounted for and presumed dead. In the days that followed, speculation focused on the labor troubles at the yard. Six months earlier, Boiler repairmen, uh, copper fitters, and other craftsmen, machinists, etc., who maintained the locomotives had gone on strike and had been replaced by strike breakers. Some of these uh, strike breakers came from Pennsylvania, Ohio, New Jersey. You know, all from the northern or northeastern parts of the country, where steam was very, very popular and prevalent in its use. Um, most of these men were from out of town and new, sh knew their, er, and new to their jobs, and many were working under assumed names. The assistant foreman at the yard was so sure that, of the trouble that he openly carried a pistol. Many people were convinced that the boiler had been sabotaged, and from today's perspective, the sabotage theory seems unlikely and the probable cause for, of the explosion is thought to be a combination of human error and mechanical failure. I've read another account where, like uh, Mr. Houston mentioned, the uh, two uh, pop-off valves is what they call them, were uh, 
in a locked position, meaning that they would not operate as they were required to. So naturally, when that pressure builds up, something's got to give, and it's the boiler. Um, another thing about uh, how the railroad employees lived, um, like Gary said, that they, they lived in, in areas close to their work. A lot of the homes were paid for by the railroad for their employees to live in. And this was common throughout the nation. In fact, if you, if you look at uh, what Mr. Pullman did, he was a uh, car builder uh, who built all the a lot of the passenger cars that were used in American passenger trains across the country. Uh, he built an entire city up in Illinois where his cars were built and had all of his employees live in that community. He had a school for all those employees' children to go to school in and were educated in. And uh, it, it was just it was just a common practice for that uh, type of uh, uh, living condition in those days. Um, well, I'd just like to take a couple of minutes to let you know about the San Antonio Railroad Heritage Museum. We're kind of the new kids on the block. We've been around since 2006. Uh, we uh, are a 501c3 organization, not-for-profit charity. Um, we are new enough on the block that we don't have a place to hang our hat and call home yet. We are working towards that goal. But one of the things that we, uh, as Gary uh, mentioned earlier, one of the major projects that we have is the maintenance and future restoration of the Southern Pacific locomotive number 794, which is currently at the uh, beautiful Sunset Station. Uh, we uh, go out there and uh, work on uh, mechanical parts of it. Uh, we've we've uh, been inside the smoke box, which is the silver part of the, boy, the uh, locomotive in the, in the very front of it, looking at the uh, tubes and flues that go through the boiler, where you know, all the steam pressure would be. Uh, we, are, uh, we have a uh, professional steam locomotive rebuilder working with us. His name is Scott Lindsay. He runs a company called Steam Operations Corporation out of Muscle Shoals, Alabama. He has rebuilt uh, 38 different steam locomotives since uh, he started his own business and was brought up working in the uh, Norfolk Southern Steam Program. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you'd like to, pardon the pun, get on board with us, uh, <laughs> we'll be grateful to have you as members of the museum. You can fill out a membership uh, application off of our website at uh, www.sahm.com. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy your weekend.